Hello and welcome to the skating lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Byer. Dave, I miss your costume. Oh, miss yeah. Okay, you know, we're channeling into next season. But okay, got it. Happy 4th of July, everyone. This is This and That. And like a firework, we are here to entertain you. So everyone who is new, please hit that subscribe button and smash that like button. Give us love. Jonathan, what's what your you fireworks? Doing? Yeah. <laughs> Is Canada Day, but I think in Canada they're not supposed to say Happy Canada Day this year because you're supposed to. There was a movement to cancel it a little bit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's not happening in the U.S. Like quarantining and social distancing, we're not about that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we're Americans so far. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Amazing, but we're working. See, we're working on Fourth of July. So in our own way, we have canceled it. It's funny. Well, I actually I'm off tomorrow, so it's uh, oh. it's very nice. Uh, You're celebrating Independence Boxing Day. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I might skate tomorrow, but just like toy around. Then I'll start up again. I took a week off, like a full. But for you, let the body heal. Let it reset. I get it. really. It was mental as much as this is physical. Like we're not mutually I, exclusive, Dave. <laughs> I had the I had this like I was walking this week, and I was like. I could not imagine being yelled at this week. I just kind of can't. What a weird concept. <laughs> Is your soul feeling a little bit more intact as of, as of last week then? No, like I missed it. But you know, like when you, okay. just, you can't emotionally handle being pushed right now. Yeah. But then I'm like, okay, I'll be ready. Once I get back, it's like such, such bullshit because once you get back on the ice and you're like, okay, let's go. But I think I was just like <laughs> in the mode where I was yeah. not wanting to be pushed for this week. Yeah, it's your own sort of like way of conditioning. Yeah, but it's you're peaking at the right time to receive that abuse. It's okay. No. Yeah. Um, I started doing Pilates yesterday with my friends, Don and Steven, you know, but like the Pilates situation, it's all very S&M with, you know, the machines and like, we did the tower class, you know, you're switching between the bars and the springs. And I just feel like the women who take Pilates are different than yoga women. Like yoga yes. women, you know, they're like stretching and with the soles of their feet, you're in like these Pilates women, they are like empowered. They believe it is better than yoga. It might be, okay. But it has a totally different energy, like that feeling from the core I used to get when I would do it. And they had those like weird rings you had to squeeze and like all this sort of stuff. Those women are empowered. The ones that teach the classes, they are intense. And I like, them. okay, I'm just saying, I like them. It's bougier than even hot yoga and it's fascinating. Okay, I love it. Hashtag team step aerobics. I was born in the wrong era. I needed more oh. of that like 80s, 90s, kind of like jumping up around the world step thing with Priscilla Gilman, remember? She was oh. a step aerobics instructor. Yes, yes, oh. she, will now, she will now be tagging you on Twitter. But like five days later, because she's always a little behind in watching the show. Okay, got it. <laughs> so, Jonathan, we finally saw a look at Team Tuberiza uh, when they we saw them choreographing for Tarasa Morozov in one clip. Mm -hmm. That was a lengthy clip, a lengthy one with Trankov and Sasha Julin. There was a lot of egos going on. A lot of performative brainstorming was happening in that video. Well, they are in front of the camera, okay? Yeah. And they are all performers, Jonathan. Yeah. Yep. I'm sure if we watched one of your opera rehearsals, you would all be very performative. So throw that shade, Jonathan. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. You are all you, extra. But you, wouldn't be, you wouldn't be unless there was a camera watching. That's what I mean. Like, this was so, like, I'm assuming not how a standard choreographic session goes, but knowing the cameras were on, like, there was such grandiose, like, everyone um, had to top the next idea with, and, like, tweak it. If, like, Julian wanted this, Atari fixed it and did it even more. Like, I felt like it was so performative for the camera, I mean. No. No. <laughs> you have clearly never been in a Russian skating rink before. And you know what, Dave? You are correct. <laughs> that was all about status and rank. Yeah. Trankov was number three on the totem pole. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sasha Julin as a coach was like, here. A Terry is like, I am the boss. Okay? I've never seen him be submissive to someone before. Her daughter doesn't even take from Julin, okay? But she can own him politically if she wants to. He yeah. is a servant, okay? Yeah. Did yeah. you not see the way she threw Genya Tarasova's hair and just like, man. Wait, at first I was like, what is she doing? 
She literally, and, and um, Tarasima was like finally, a Hamada student who was being. Uh, she grabbed the ponytail and dictated her hair around and exited. And yeah. that's, not, that's not what they want, is it? And then sure enough, when they did it, like she just moved that way. But now I will always forever see a Terry grabbing her ponytail all season when she does that move. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I believe it had more passion. You know, the music maybe doesn't call for it in Claire de Lune. It's, it's rather like. So Ours, yeah. <laughs> and, and Terry brought out the dominatrix in WC, right? Rossiba was leading with her head after that moment on. Yeah. Yeah. She made it a dominatrix program, and I'm here for it. All right. <laughs> I and the mistress's it. name is Claire DeLune. It's about yeah. a dominatrix woman named Claire. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I loved it. I just you know, and they did that thing where we're not choreographing to the music, we're just coming up with art and the music's just gonna be- Yeah, there. just throw it in anywhere. Yeah, no problem. Right? And how about Trankov? He was just like having a coffee. I mean, like, wh what is he gonna do with those- Well, at some point you can't compete with that energy. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, between Julen and Juberitza, you're not getting a word in. So you just like kind of, I think, let it go. I think we're all curious. Like, because now we've literally thrown this team to everyone. We've given them every queen, right? We've given them, um, we've given them Marina Zueva. We had Robin Sokoe come in. We've had Elton John help them. We've, you know- We had Voronov trying to teach him jumps. And they came from Nina, who at the time was supposedly such a goof, you know, like. If Tudbaridza cannot beat you into submission to perform, no one can. Okay. But that's what's funny, Dave, because I was like, no one, like, yes, they had questionable material in the past, but Marina sort of like helped with that a lot. I was like, their um, leading with the ponytail area or not was never the issue. That was never the issue with this team. I would like to see a Terry screaming at them while they're learning to land their jumps and complete their elements. I think everything was the issue for this team. They've, how do you have a team that has the most beautiful lines? Yes no connection with each other or the music. Right. Or like, souls don't seem to have the body, but then when you see them in between poses, there's like a lightness and stuff. They're the team that needs to be doing shimmy lifts. They need a program about suffering. They need, remember that Weaver and Poggi program about this bitter earth? Like that mm -hmm. is what this team should be doing, okay? Yeah. Are you the best Weaver Poggi program, the first iteration? No. But. That was not my cup of tea, that bitter program, but um, it, it was, no. It, okay. it left a bitter taste in your earth. <laughs> it, it was, okay. No, it didn't, it didn't hit it. But actually, Dave, I didn't know if Claire de Lune, because it's sort of- That best we were in, better than Just Me Malad, better than- um, when Your favorite was the Michael Jackson program. I no, I liked uh, Dosa Maria de Buenos Aires. And I really liked the program they did there last year in 2019 with the No Touch Step sequence, the, mm. the French music that they skated to. Yeah. So those were my favorite Weaver and Bougie. Okay. okay, okay. And I would even take the one where they were the statues, all right? That was, mm. okay, those were my favorites. So, no. Okay, let the record show. Rude, rude, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I led you because I remember how you felt about this bitter. <laughs> And blame Morozov for that, Michael Jackson. You gotta try. Yeah, he, they, were, they were throwing everything at him, you know? Yeah. yeah. That Arn Wes was fine. It was just not, not wow. Yeah. Not but wow. wow. Yeah. Um, but actually, I mean, Claire de Lune, not wow, but I actually thought like it's kind of sort of generic loveliness, like might actually work for them, Tarasov mm -hmm. and Morozov. But again, it all boils down to can you do the elements? That's and then of course they're just you know marking their toe loops and stuff. I'm like that's where we need to see the Atari thing happening. Well, oftentimes people will mark their jobs. Yeah. Like no, of course. Program. Although Sandra said that Brian Boitano just did his jobs when she did his program. He just did the jumps. I whole would thing. like to think, in no danger of having a triple, <laughs> that I would like to do the same. Like same when some people learn a new role and like an opera and they do staging, they mark it and then like sort of figure out the logistics and then add in the full voice. But I need to be doing it with the full voice at the time to get the coordination. Otherwise I just see poor Tarasova potentially like muscle memorying in her single toe loop here for her specifically. 
Well, also sometimes when you're getting the program, that's like when you're on your body has completely come down. Yeah. So you're completely building back up. Although some people, like we see with Karate Morozov, if you notice, they're actually in the Sambo 70 rink, it looks like. Right. Some people will actually get the program when they still have their skates on from the world championships and they're still in kind of good shape mm. before they take the vacation. Oh, smart. Because then you come back and then you like have the new skates and then you work into it. But then you kind of like broke in the process, but you learned the choreography when you were at your full ability, right? Yeah. Whereas if you come back, you're like getting back into it and your skating skills have now- Yeah, just, now you're multitasking, you're creating and coming back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's kind of like one or the other. What do you prefer? Now, I have to tell you, I don't know if there are pairs on like the, the rinks you've been training at, but it was like seeing okay. a pairs team flying around amidst all those single skaters. I was like, that has to be sort of a different vibe for them to share that kind of ice, no? Or am I just making that up? Of course, yeah. Yeah. I would think that would be difficult. I practice with like some dance teams in the morning. Okay. And the one thing I will notice, it's funny because sometimes on, when I would do my spin lessons at 6 a.m., which is an ungodly hour for me. Yes, so, correct. Um, you do what you can. You know, you do what you need to. <laughs> and it'll be like Lindsay Thorngren, the novice dance team of Kristen and Igor, me, and then like, Kristen and Igor's like eight year old daughter and her partner, but they're doing moves in the field. But it's just like a very unique energy. You know, a dance team, they come like a freight train across mm. the ice. Yeah. The most confusing thing I think with any thing is, <laughs> and Dick Button would rant about this and I hear this in my brain, is when you're skating with someone, you start to like recognize the patterns and obviously you can recognize what element they're doing. But in terms of the step sequences these days that retrograss because you have to fit in all the clusters and go back and they go back and forth, there's no shape to a step sequence anymore. Someone's just haphazardly going around the ice like it's not a straight line. Well, how could you anticipate it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and like trying to figure out when you don't know the person's program, very challenging. Very yeah. challenging when like the, the, the footwork sequences go everywhere. And right. There's no shape to it. So that should be a deduction, in my opinion. That's ridiculous. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Amorphous. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't know what is happening, but Dick Button will be rant. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, that is the most confusing thing. But otherwise, it's. Um, okay. But yes, it is a different energy. So that's okay. why usually the top pairs would train with other top pair teams and they know what each other is doing. Yeah. Plus those those girls should all be together, right? Those those right. Powerful women, you're right. Yes, it's uh, it's a different the drama. Thing. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, but in the team through Paris, did you notice like Terry seems very into her eye? She's like patting her back in the video, and obviously everything we see in the video is very curated. But we didn't see a coaster Naya triple axel, which we saw before the break, but then not after. So I think Jonathan, this triple axel is going to be the will they or won't they of the next three months. Okay. Will she or won't she? Okay. <laughs> and it, it, I believe it will return one day, but I think until it does, it is going to be the, the stress, the squeeze the, okay. the I think they will- Suspense, like, yeah. Get out of it at the last moment. But remember, that's how it was before Finlandia in 2019. Okay. It was Finlandia that she did. But remember before her senior B, like, we didn't know if it was gonna come. And at the last moment, boom, she did it in the program. That was the summer when she had been injured and she wasn't with the other skaters on the ice and she was skating with the younger ones. So I imagine it'll be an intense summer because you have all those girls going for the Olympics who right. are all are probably very intense with one another. You have Trusova with the red hair and you have Costa Naya with that energy. And you have Valieva, but and then you've got like Uzushova and Chroma. And then oh, oh, I said it right. I said it right this time. I didn't do the K at the end. Um, and then you have uh like Sherbakova who's off the ice and going to be coming back for that narrative. So yes, yes. And it, this particular montage of skaters was just about like them back at it training. It didn't seem like some of their other videos where it's like 
an onslaught compilation of outstanding elements. Like that was clearly not the goal. The goal was to like show them working. They clearly gave these girls a real rest after the season uh, where they were on video vacations, mentally, physically after they did those shows, because I believe this training camp is going to get intense. Yeah. Quickly. So, and I think they even they have to know that like <clears throat> to come in a little clear headed mm -hmm. about it would be ideal. Yes. You know what I mean? That they'll be fresher and more aggressive if there has been a small break. So. I, I wonder like what kind of small break are we talking about with Sherbakova? Is right. it a foot and toe? Is it like the foot? I mean, it's not a, we didn't, did not see a cast, although there was like a sock situation. Right. I don't think that they would put it in a cast because they want to get her back on the ice as quickly as possible. But is she going to grow another inch during this time? What will happen? It's not the best time for an injury. Right. Well, I or arguably for her, she can still, if anyone can, can figure out this gap. I mean, she has, we have seen her come back in harrowing moments before. I think she could, she could yeah. handle it. Because I doubt she was going to be adding new material. Well, she could be trying to, or at least yeah. keeping the quad lots that we didn't see at Worlds. Right. right. It's not a great time, but if there is a time to be injured, it's now. Yeah. And not later. So yeah. she just won't be the one that's you know likely to be at the, the front of the starting gate but it's interesting how their fortunes are going to all keep changing as we go uh, to the olympics when we get that pyramid cooking <laughs> not quite enough for the pyramid yet right yeah. so no, we don't want to peak too soon it's going to be too much pyramiding at this point like you fast forward every week but you know it has to be at the right moment and right now it's and we need the momentum this is still too early to really be futzing with it I mean, look, Sherbakova obviously not at the top this week, right? <laughs> she can't literally get up there with the toe. <laughs> okay. I think it's, it's uh, yeah. I think everyone's kind of in that moment where you don't want to be ready too early. Exactly. Then you wonder for a skater like Vincent Zo, right? He just did six quads over two programs uh, at the Broadmoor Open, did very well. A lot of high GOE on that first, I think it was the Lutz, right? Yes, but Jonathan, like... I know. Well, that told me who was judging. <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> Although, I, I believe he skated very well. But he I don't... Getting, he was getting nines for transitions and skating skills. And so that also just indicated... I also believe that there's improvement, right? But at the same time, I think the overall sense from this competition that he's doing very well. But if you think about it, this is a skater who just competed at Worlds. He's had injuries. He's been down. He did perform here. He's supposed to perform again at Cranberry. So will he come down to come back up for this if he wants to go to be the one to go to Nevilleborn to get the spot for the US? Then he would do the Grand Prix, then get ready for nationals and then the Olympics. Like when is the down for him? I was just gonna say it's been a really long time since we have seen him compete a full season. Well. We've, and we've often seen him do well early in the season and then struggle later. So just in terms of his timing and his peaking, I think it's interesting. I think he's obviously a fighter and obviously wants to show that Worlds was a fluke and that he fully intends on being that third member of the, of the team. At this point, could you see him actually being displaced from the Olympic team? Assuming Jason and Nathan are are, are two shoe-ins. I mean, honestly, if we're being honest, yes, I know he faltered, but again, I, even at that point at Worlds, I asked who did you think was going to be able to have really pulled out much better? I mean, Yaro, again, he came out and his, he now has to prove that also that Nationals was not a fluke in a positive way. Do you know what I mean? Because I, he'll be the one I'm interested in seeing. That's the only one I could see that could actually do it. I know we're talking about Torgashev, but like he's so on the periphery for me because of the past. And even with Raphael, even with all this sort of stuff, I, it, would, it would be so much harder for me to trust him than even an up and down Vincent. An up and down Vincent still seems more reliable to me than a Torgashev, but we'll see. But Yaro, if he pulls out like performances as consistently um, of high quality like he did at Nationals, there's a real, there's a real story cooking here. 
And so they're supposed to both compete at Cranberry. Uh, Vincent is registered. Okay. So are uh, Brady Tunnell, Alyssa Liu, and Gracie Gold are all for that Cranberry at the end of the summer. And that will, that plus Champs Camp will determine uh, the Neville Horn spots. So if you look at that, that's a lot of pressure for Yarrow. At the same time, for him to even get to Neville Horn, let's say that they would send Yarrow, which I don't believe that they would even send Yarrow. I think- Are we only sending one, Dave? Yeah, because you can only send one to Neville Horn. So you're okay. gonna send Yarrow, who did well at nationals. Are you gonna send Vincent, who's been a consistent top three US skater over the last four years? Honestly, I think you'd send Vincent because right. even though we know the skating skills suffer, he has been in front of an international panel more and I feel they might be more inclined to, to get he, behind him instead of Yarrow if he's a newbie. Right. Even though he's not, you know what I mean? But So then you send him there. Vincent has two Grand Prix, right? Yarrow would only potentially get one if he gets the TBD. As many, and as many like senior B events as he could potentially get, this season that are not in the challenge, maybe not the challenger series or whatever, you put him there, then you look into the body of work argument when you look at nationals and you go down and you're like, Vincent's been to the world championships. He's been a world medalist. Unless Vincent, Jason or Nathan are really very injured and out of the conversation, I think it's gonna be very hard I think so too. To look I think that there's always a possibility, but it would involve Yarrow going like, full out at Cranberry at every senior B and getting that TBD and nailing it and like just making a huge sensation and then backing it up. It would take, I think it's possible, but it would take a monumental effort. And God forbid, like Vincent does get consistent enough and suddenly Jason is the one who's vulnerable. And he could be. You know, yeah. He could be. Yeah. Uh, you know, that things happen. Yarrow could land for, what if it's a quad fest at national? What are they going to do? Right. I don't, it, it would be very hard to not send Jason Brown to the Olympic Games, right? Yeah. Because he has the overall finish, but then you know, if he makes any mistakes and the other boys land all their quads, oh dear. Oh dear, because the US is obsessed with the quads. The media has wanted the quads. They've wanted the contenders then you're looking at a period, but the likelihood of that happening is, right. but you kind of like have to think, right? right. I do think Torgashev could show up with a couple of quads at nationals and do well, but then he's been out of the conversation for a while. Yeah, I, fi I find his journey would be much more difficult. He does have the Raphael push, which helps as a coach, right? That they're invested in that situation. So, but I don't, I don't know. Really? Yeah as you get uh, down the line. I'll be very, it's kind of the thing, this TBD business is definitely going to be hard. But, and I, I don't think it has to go, if Yarrow shows up at Cranberry and at Champstown, I think I would really love to see him have that TBD mm -hmm. so he can really make a case if one's to be made. That's how he has to do it. Yeah. Otherwise, have, you're literally banishing him from the team by not giving him the TBD. I really think the only, Olympic team that to me is really being contested at this moment is a ladies team for USA. The other teams I think you could write right now who's going. Yeah. Unfortunately, because Cal Lang and Johnson this week, we saw that not only did they not get a Grand Prix, they're not in the ISP or the envelope funding. But then showed up on Instagram skating. So they are skating. Right. And I have to say, this is an interesting choice because obviously, this is what happens because there are not a lot of journalists with legal departments covering skating. It's obviously something happened. No one knows exactly what happened. They've been able to skirt around not announcing why they withdrew from Worlds. And now they are not competing on the Grand Prix. They are not in the selection pool, but then they want us to show that they're still skating and training together. So. They're not going off to do shows. So what is going on? And are they going to give an announcement? Because when you post that video, I, I mean, I haven't read the comments, but I wonder if people had the temerity to ask why they are not. 
competing because it's almost becoming it's becoming fair game to be like what is going on i mean this week the tech message has started to fly where people are now really wondering like wait what yeah, but it's that? really something is and i think the longer we don't know the more rumors fly and the more uh, insidious the rumors become about no. that situation right so I know, weird. And again, they still look, they look in shape. You know what I mean? Like they, they did the twist, right? On the thing, they had speed, they had power. So it didn't look like someone had a scary injury we're not talking about or something like it's that. one of the only things where usually the rumors fly in skating, right? Maybe because of COVID and because of the pandemic and, you know, it went under the radar a little bit. Usually this would be huge. This happened in singles, we would know what happened. Well, and we probably would have had at least a four continents. And that could have told us something also. Did they would they have competed at four continents or would they have withdrawn from four continents as well? Like, I don't know. Yeah. It does, it just all seems peculiar. Is hmm? Is this because no one cares about the second ranked US pair team? I mean, but we were pretty outraged when they didn't get. Or, I mean, there was enough of like a backlash when they didn't get named to the world team the first time around. But now. Yeah. But then but now, how they now they're 0 for 2. I was like, are you pouting? Like, I don't. So I'm confused about them still training because, all right, they're not in the selection pool. They're not in the grand pool. And can you tell me what the selection pool means? Do you mean for the, the, USS can, the USFS can pick you for senior B events, for international? So this takes them even out of senior Bs. Yes. That's crazy. I didn't know if it took them out of the running because for just, it was, they were never up for a Grand Prix or something like that. But okay, so they're just planning on not competing at all this fall well, by not being in that list. I think not planning is maybe not the right phrase. I think they are currently not eligible. Okay. Okay. Is it a situation where they're like peeling something or trying to work something to happen behind the scenes? I remember then, when. And but at this point, when you've been pulled out of the Grand Prix, there are so many question marks about you. Are the judges and the committee ever going to, try? how well would you have to skate at nationals to beat a team like Ashley and Tim let, so let's say that it's Alexa and Brandon, Jessica and Brian, Ashley and Jim and Nationals, right? And let's say Kelly and Jensen get added back to the pool. This was all a cough. This is all nothing, you know, whatever. Because I think if it were something really big, we would know. Like if it were really big, something like really bad, everyone would, know, right? So this has to be somewhere in like the cracks. Yeah. The cracks, a little like maybe embarrassing, whatever. They don't want to, right? So let's say you're out, but then you're looking at who do we send to the Olympics under this body of work rule. You have Ashley, Kane, and Tim who have been to world championships. They've been national champion. They've competed on the Grand Prix this year. Mm -hmm. Are you gonna really send Jessica and Brian who weren't even the selection pool and who withdrew from worlds? I don't think people are gonna vote, but I think you're gonna lose, let's say you need 13 votes to go. I think you've lost at least six already, right? Like I think you, there are enough people, I think there are gonna be enough question marks. It was just unfortunate, but what is going on? And right? again, I don't know that international judges are gonna like, you know, jump to help out Ashley and Tim or Jessica and Brian. So, but they may be more inclined because they at least know Ashley and Tim. And Brian and Jessica have been kind of a domestic mainstay these past few seasons. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate, it just seems like the way that the, you know, the Olympic, you know, when you think about Ross Minor and you think about Ashley Wagner going over Mariah, it just looks like you look at these situations and who would be in those. The Grand Prix where you can play it out. Even Hawaii and Baker against Carrera and Panamarenko. Hawaii and Baker have been to see the world so many times. I think that they could replace that team with they a Carrera. Unlikely at this yeah. point. So. But I agree with you, I think they could. And actually, if you're looking at international judges, we see the international judges become less and less interested in Hawaii and Baker. You, do you know what I mean? Like they used to just sort of do a little bit better, but I think, again, it, it would take a far, it would take a big moment for them not to send Hawaii and Baker. Yeah, there are so many teams in that 
mix where Hawaii and Baker are. And some of those international to look, the UK, historically great at skating, great at dance, hasn't had a top skater slash top dance. They're going to get behind uh, Fear and Gibson. Okay, that's a that's a push. Okay, they yeah. have a lot to do with skating, even if they haven't had a top team in a while. You've got, you know, Spain, you have all these other countries. And frankly, those countries have judges. Yeah. Well, even as we established the Polish team, which I think pale in comparison to Wyatt and Baker, but we see sometimes they get marks. When you're the third team from the US or the third team from Canada, you don't have another judge to help when your teams are in it at the top, right? Like, you know, here's, here's where some of that like provocative leadership could be coming in because Hawaii and Baker going, I think we sort of know what the result, I have a feeling they'll be just outside the top 10. Like, it, it is sort of like how it might be shaking down. And I think if you're the US and you're like, this is kind of it for them, it seems like sending them in some ways is like a nod of like appreciation and thanks for all they've done. But yet, if you really wanna shake things up and ensure the future, do not start sending, um, uh, Panamarenko to start like getting that momentum going for them, get an Olympics under their thing because they're clearly the team of our future. Well, I wonder what happens when these teams are duking it out because they are in the same training center, but like same, but not right. So Scott is in this, they're in, they're competing against each other. And how do you keep the harmony? I was just watching that Tamara Moskvina documentary for her 80th birthday. And they kept talking about how intense it was when she was coaching Volova and Vasiliev and her husband was coaching Selishneva and Makarov and they were at each other and that there was real tension even in the marriage at that point. So yeah. also worth watching for the footage alone, you, there's so much of Tamara uh, skating in singles. It's great to yeah. see. So, yeah. And, and I like when she was, <laughs> cause she did an interview that accompanied it and it was talking about like the Beelman thing that they always bring up because we see that footage of it. And she's like, well, it didn't matter cause I was in like 11th place at European. So who cares that I did that spin? <laughs> and I was like, this woman is a character, yeah. In gymnastics, they would debate it forever. The people would start okay. at that, even if it wasn't. Okay. Oh my goodness. So Henrietta Nodi performed a skill on balance beam that she got named, but it was really done by a Russian gymnast first. And then sometimes commentators will refer to it as the Masipanova. And then there are Hungarians as if that's an anti-Hungarian sentiment, or are they just giving it the proper, right? Like this becomes all sorts of politicized. Yeah. And I get all of these messages on Instagram and I just don't know how to respond because it's a minefield either way. What are you going to, what Thumbs are you going to up. say? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 Amazing. <laughs> Exclamation point response. <laughs> yeah. Now, what did you think about Chelsea and Danny? So your boy, Danny O'Shea, skating to Taylor Swift. Uh, you know what I think of? Because you were the better. first one drew my attention to what David Wilson, I think, was doing with the Chinese pairs, where he was thinking about the gender of the singer because he felt like that ultimately could bring out one partner or the other, depending on whether you use male or female vocals. So it was sort of like funny at first, like, I don't know, something about Taylor Swift and Danny didn't like just jive with me at first, perhaps, um, but it does like sort of soften the whole look but like, sure enough, when he does that like hip wiggle, like, and they're doing that like counterbalance thing, he knows how to move his hips. Did he get built up top to do the twist? I think so. It looks like that was um, a strategy of some sort because it sort of changed the overall shape, I think. It changed his movement quality for me. Yeah. And his overall... Just and like, again, this isn't like, um, this is sort of how I feel about Tim, remembering those like gorgeous classical programs of 2014. And now that he does sort of this like emo-y, less, less balletic sort of material, I don't know that it shows off that thing that he can do so well. And same with Danny, like he can move, but this was like, I don't know if this is the thing that brings out what he can do so well, but it was interesting to see. And I liked that they were, obviously wearing matching white and black because they want to show you that they have great unison, how matched they are. This was a, like a strategy. Uh, yeah. Fair enough, you know. Not what I would have envisioned them skating to. No. <laughs> I think they have a lovely look. Mm -hmm. They look good for a first year team. Where was, what rink was that? Do you know? 
great park rink uh, in okay. uh, California where, okay. you know, in San, you could see uh, that was when Renee Rocco was choreographing for Alexa and Brandon in the background. Ah, okay, okay. So that's where uh, Nate Bartholomew and uh, right. Katie are right. and all the other. Yeah, I'll be interested to see them develop. Yeah. And okay. also it was one, one thing because they were showing such um, non-symmetrical footwork in the beginning and stuff. So it, it was sort of hard to tell, but like, I'm intrigued. I yeah. want to see more. And you know, they, we didn't see the jumps or the twists. No throws, <laughs> no real lifts. Yeah. That was yeah. we really want to see. Right. Uh -uh. Yeah. Well, that's what I was saying about the trust. Never Danny Filament. Okay. Watch him dipping her for 20 minutes instead of doing any elements. <laughs> yeah, but in this case. Yeah. Twist, never Danny's element with Tara. Right. Not strength. And side by side jumps, perhaps not her element. So I'm now like, okay, we saw what we saw was nice, but we didn't see the stuff yet. Yeah. Yeah. But I have heard they have nice lifts in general, and so, and they have time. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was nice to see them skate. It yeah, was, exactly. Something new. Taylor Swift didn't know that we would see that. Didn't know. No. <laughs> you know Danny's in California now. It's it's a different yeah. vibe. Okay. It's all about that folklore life. Yeah. <laughs> You know what? Chelsea's coming back from skating in China. You know, maybe she just wants it to be a little bit lighter. Maybe right? something lovely. Maybe just something lovely is what they needed. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> now, how about Kolyada doing Schindler's List, which of course will be compared to Jason Brown's uh, Schindler's List? Yes. So, and this is for the short then, or he's replacing the long? He's replacing the long. That's just, I, I mean, I really wanted him to keep that long, but of course, let's keep growing, I suppose. I have a feeling this could be insanely amazing. It could be amazing. It could be amazing. Now, I unpopular opinion, the the Jason Schindler's list isn't one of my favorite things he's done. I've appreciated it, but I did not find it. Everyone was like, he's gotta bring back the Schindler's list. He's stuff. I found it lovely. I thought he's beautiful in all things. I didn't find it transcended generic lovely positions for me in any iteration I saw it in. And I, I know I'm in the minority on this. It didn't touch me like I thought it might have been able to. I think it's the best program he's done over the last three years. I mean, it's certainly better than the what? Simon Garfunkel in the Brian Orser bowling shirt. Uh, uh, it's, yeah. It's better than the slaughter on Fifth Avenue went because it wound up being like so hard. Yeah. I, I don't know. I would have liked that Angels in America program for Jason so badly. Well, I think he 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 could have done something new. Like I didn't think that the Schindler's List program was where a sinner man. I was like, remember, God. I said the Angels in America program. Just remember, I brought it up. I thought it would be iconic. But the record show, yeah, he came um, out this season like we wanted because we always thought as soon as he came out, maybe he'll own it and compete better, like Adam Rapon. That's what yeah. we were politely trying to say for years without saying it. But he and, is officially bringing back the Schindler's List, right? Wasn't that announced a while back? Yeah. yeah. He's bringing back his Jewishness, but not his gayness. Now, I think the Angels in America could be both, right? The same. <laughs> Although the list could be. Oh my goodness, because you know people get so upset about the Star of David, he should wear a pink star. A pink, no, a pink triangle. The triangle, yeah, yeah. Although that wasn't touched on so much in the film, but... Um, yeah, but it happened historically, Jonathan. Yeah. And the people who complain like, should people be skating to Schindler's List? Are they Jewish, are they not Jewish? You, you wear a pink star and you, a, pink a pink triangle. triangle. Okay. Yeah, yeah. See what happens then. So yeah. That's what have done it. <laughs> Lesbian Schindler's List. Okay, come on, come on. Amazing. She's, yeah, she's got to pull out all the stops to try to make. What would Twitter do? What would Twitter do? Explode per the usual. Like, I mean, it's like doesn't even matter. Um, but I think Kolya Da could be very beautiful. By the way, I'm not calling Satoko a lesbian. I'm not even hinting it. And she's not doing the gymnast thing. The gymnasts now, like the young kids now, they come out, but they come out subtly. They like comments. Oh, they okay. happy pride and they have like Lori Hernandez this week allegedly dating a girl who's in trampoline she like things you don't hear every day okay and that pantsuit that Lori wore at the trial sold us everything okay <laughs> I have suspected for a long time when she was like playing the guitar on the beach I was just like getting the vibe from Lori out there okay okay 
And like mm -hmm. now she said happy pride on the last day of the month with her roommate slash roommate. Special friend, yeah. <laughs> there was a happy pride with like their mm, like matching converse together. Okay. Tagged her. They both posted it. And it was like a wink, wink, none judge. And then she was like liking things on Twitter. Okay. So it was like clear, but it wasn't a huge announcement. Okay, so, got it. Got and then Morgan Hurd also did a Twitter voices where she was, they were referring to like, she did it with her friend and they were re referring to the straights as others. So I was like, okay. Like mm -hmm. the kids these days, they're, they're different. It's a different generation. Different about it. Yeah, okay, okay. It was, so yeah, um, I don't know. Anyway, it was it was very exciting for Lori. I mean, imagining. Okay, Lori Hernandez. Does anyone know is is Charlotte Drury going to the uh, to the Olympics? Because Lori's now a commentator. Did you watch the Olympic trials, Jonathan? I was all in. It was like Christmas. It was like getting outraged, the fun, the drama. Like last Sunday, I'm still tired, Jonathan. And then NBC they released Golden during the competition, which made me very upset and I tweeted at them, like, could we not have done it earlier? Okay, you're right. Peacock, this is NBC. Right. Think about it. You put it out, obviously I'm gonna wanna watch, okay? Right. We've been right. waiting for this for months. We were getting three episodes of a six episode series. Why not release it at like four o'clock so we could watch the episodes, get ready for the Olympic trials, uh, get yeah. excited and tune in. Okay. Obviously, it's not gonna like start with the biggest launch ever when we're like, you know, watching. Already in it, yeah. You know, I'm so addicted. You know, I stayed up. You know, I watched all three episodes after the trials and it was like a long selection. Then we had to feel outraged and we had to go through it, Jonathan. Like, I mean, the journey, the journey. Then we have to stay up. And that Suni Lee is a queen in that golden series on Peacock. She is the queen that we didn't know. She's sassy, she's fun. Okay. You watch none of it, it's fine. But um, I didn't you keep missing out on like, it's no. like, it's like being Catholic and not taking the communal wine. Like, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, what? <laughs> well, well, quite frankly, I needed television. It's like being, it's a streaming app. You've got a phone. Well, but they didn't do Peacock uh, for the ladies. They only did Peacock for the men. Right, well, Golden is on Peacock. Okay, you okay. could see Queen Dominique Dawes. Okay. Her beautiful hair and her great skin. Okay. The Barbie doll we all want talking. <laughs> she needs to do it for skating, okay? okay. Think okay. about it. Follows five girls. We have six up for consideration. Okay, we need to pick. I think Star Andrews has to be in it. Okay. She's in the commercials, like, right? Yeah. We need her, like, recording studio time in the Aaron film. Chen. Yeah. We need, like, the returning Olympian. Yeah. Brady is too boring. Well, uh, but you've got to include Brady, though. In the background. Yeah, okay. You do not need Brady. Well, I mean, she's probably going. <laughs> if we follow Brady, you have to get Tom Z. Do you want Tom Z in this documentary? Do you not? I don't. I don't need him. Amber Glenn. Okay, yeah. Yes. TikTok queen. Yes, yes. Do we want Mariah Bell? Yeah, I feel like she would Raphael. actually go. Hmm? Like Mariah gives us Raphael, right? Yeah, she does. And we're here for it. We're here for it. Gracie? Yeah. Turning queen? Yeah. And then you, you need a list. We could follow six. Because if you need Alyssa Liu with the father and Jeremy. And Massimo and like the whole gang. Yeah. Yeah. I think you got it right there. Maybe we have six. You know, they and, Paul, and, and Paulina Edmonds. She's making a comeback. She's skating to Mr. McCavity from Cats. No, no, no. Did you see Paulina Edmonds on the beach doing her modeling? Like, she's giving you like 90s supermodel vibes on her. <laughs> a vintage oh. piece. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, she wears a one piece bathing suit like I've never seen before. She's <laughs> iconic, Jonathan. Paulina Edmonds, icon. Yeah. She's Self never had a personality in her programs. But on Instagram, she puts Ashley and Gracie to shame. Always in your interviews too with her. She yeah. always held her own and had an energy and a presence that uh, other viewers do not when they're being- On the beach. Like goals, Jonathan. 
goals. Right? Amazing. And I love that on her podcast, she kind of like plays down like, I don't know why anyone would ever ask me about drinking just because I was a college student. And it was like, Paulina, we all saw your Instagram. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 she was giving Simone Biles. How about Simone Biles was drinking yesterday on her Instagram? Is she self-sabotaging? I don't, I don't like this boyfriend. I know she's selling us. She was just sipping. Like I have a bet it's like a photo op. John, she was doing shots before the Olympic trials, like weeks before. She's got a lot of pressure on her. Well, so maybe she needed those shots to unwind. She did not seem at her emotional best at the Olympic trials. Well, better. <clears throat> if I'm she had been too flawless, maybe she would have been a little bit irked she going in. burned out. She seems over it. I don't know if this is the healthiest coping mechanism when you're about you know, to dominate the Olympics. Yeah, I'm not the person to talk to about healthy Credit. coping mechanisms. <laughs> Credit. She could fall and NBC would tell you it was the most beautiful fall she, they've ever seen. Best of all time. Best ever. Let's watch but it again. Simone gave us Nancy Kerrigan at the trials and you didn't even watch, okay? Uh, what? First event, she goes, well, that sucked. Second event, I just want to die. I mean, and these were like- Third event, this is the corniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Third event, tears. Third event, tears. Okay, okay. I did see that guy watching Michaela Skinner go nuts. The, that like that viral moment with like her Uber fan or whatever was happening there. You know, from afar, I've been told we look like he was wearing my color. <laughs> it is a power color. <laughs> I mean, incredible. Wait, let's, for two seconds, let's talk about this girl that was at um, Broadmoor Open that did the quad double. Because we yeah. also talked about her when she was in the junior event at Nationals, <laughs> where all things considered, the judges just plowed right over her. Yes. And she was even doing quads and stuff like that then. And I just thought it was such an indicator that like in Russia, everyone will be like getting behind this girl. And here in the United States, like they almost went out of her way at junior nationals to bury her. Well, she's not with a name coach, right? She's not like with a Tom Z right. or a Tammy, right? So she doesn't have that. She doesn't have, she was new. She was yeah. brand new in the juniors. I think they're working on the skating skills. That's not her strength. The quad wasn't quite rotated at nationals. It was here, it got credit. And now she's, look, she attempted at the nationals and now she did it here. So now she's buzz about this girl. Yeah. She's about to get like a junior Grand Prix, right? Yeah. This is yeah. about to happen. So, you know, I don't think people outside of Instagram and outside of really the nitty gritty knew who she was. Right. I don't think she necessarily got helped. Even if you looked at the junior results, like you'd have to look so far down in order to have found her. I mean, we were watching her because we knew she was side, right? like Some of these juniors that are going for the junior empire are much older. So they naturally have like the better skating skills that come from having more muscle and strength and mileage behind you. She trains on the same rink as Alyssa Liu, but with different coaches. So, uh, I'll be curious to see kind of how she develops. It's yeah, obviously exactly. extremely promising. Isabel was trying quads there. Uh, so these are, you know, contenders for the Junior Grand Prix of making it. Then you have Lindsay, you've got Audrey Shin who's going. So we have a lot of people that were at Skate America last year. Right. But now it wasn't an international really. And now they're going back to the Junior Grand Prix to try to maximize exposure and points. and. Right things so interesting but also interesting to see because like young you then also bringing back the triple axel but i did not realize she was starting her quads i mean they got double carrots and things here but i didn't realize that was in the mix for her at the moment young you think about like another skater that didn't do so well a couple months ago because missed the world team comes back shows a gorgeous triple axel cleanest i think we've seen from her in a long yeah. time so. yeah yeah I always wonder, like, um, when you see that super long axle setup, like, how much of that is like that stalling, is overthinking, is fear, but but it seemed to have taken forever. And then I thought, well, there's no way this is going to happen then. But then she landed it beautifully. Yeah. Big GOE on that. Yeah. She's going to keep us guessing. She keeps the competitiveness <laughs> going in uh, South Korea, right? Yeah. Yeah. That was a big turnaround for her. And I'm glad to see it because. She's a lovely skater, so. She's had a ton of athletic ability for a long time. And yeah. the quad, maybe not so much, but the triple right. axel, 
hey, yeah. hey girl. <laughs> that yeah. was uh, very, very nice. So yeah, I was into that. Um, yeah, the Sprout more open. I wish that we saw more, like, we didn't if have a lot Dave, I would have sat at a computer watching the whole freaking thing. I would have loved to have seen Vincent. I would have loved to have seen all of Young Years free. I would have loved, you know, all this sort of stuff. Um, and again, I even to find the results, it was like difficult to figure out where to find them. And I don't know if they want to keep it sort of under wraps, but I thought you got a whole bunch of people hungry for skating content right now. We would all have tuned in and streamed it if it had been readily. I have nothing going on. Yeah. No. Going on, I would want. <laughs> I would have watched. I mean, yeah, lots of things happening. I definitely. So we did see Nathan Chen is in Sun Valley this week. He's going to do the International Classic when it's in Boston. That was the event that was in Colorado, and they're hosting it in Boston. But um, he's not doing the Cranberry. That's Brady, Alyssa, and Gracie. Vincent, so I write down all my notes. Um, the Cranberry is the. That's the one in Jersey, or that's the one in Philadelphia, in outside Philadelphia. No, no, no. Liberty is like the, the competition formerly known as Liberty, which is the right. Philadelphia International okay. in figure skating competition, whatever. Okay. The event formerly known as Liberty, that's in Philly. Cranberry is in Boston. He's in Boston. Okay, got it, got it. In August. So um, also the coach Victor Pfeiffer moved to Colorado. So he had some kids there. He was from Delaware. So that's another one in the mix, getting uh, lots of coaches there. Um, Sasha and Danny Newdecker, who were with Delilah, are now with Drew Meekins. And Drew Meekins was coaching Vincent. Okay, we just need the Vincent so more coaching changes than Nicole Bobek. I mean, <laughs> like, who is the head coach this week? And how do we decide? Okay, yeah. is yeah. Drew the mediator between like Tammy and Tom and Mia Hamada? Like, how did that happen? Right. I don't know. But wasn't Drew sort of mediating for someone else before? Or was he mediating for Vincent when it was time? Yeah, his father was a politician. So he may be dealing with, you know, <laughs> peace treaties all around. <laughs> okay. But tell me, Jonathan, do you think he's the coach too early in the season? Because I mean, is the coach of Vincent at the beginning of the year ever the coach of Vincent at the end of the year? I mean, yeah, according on paper, it seemed to have worked at this event. Which coach do you think, how do you think they play it? Like, is Tom gonna text the mother? Will Tammy just pull her aside? Does Tammy have enough, I feel like Tammy's a confident woman. She's like, he'll come back to me. How are they gonna play it as we go towards Worlds? I mean, it is like a chess game. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And unfortunately the pawn is susceptible to falling. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like it's, we gotta be careful with him. I, there's a lot of strong person. Remember when he was gonna go to, Lee Barcal and yes, and did for a while and then came back at a nationals and he was like, worry and yeah yeah there's a lot of strategies that seem to have been started at various even with Mark and Peter for a hot minute oh I don't remember that okay yes, because they were like overseeing when he was going to Brown okay how do you keep track of their coaching? Yeah, I mean, what, what, he had of... to be chaotic and his skating at times oh. gives off that chaos and disorganization. I like we at least have like similar players that always come. Yeah. It's kind of like Bobby and Whitney, you know, they're gonna get back together eventually. Like, you know, he's gonna have Tom Z in the mix. It's some, um, right? You know, Tammy's gonna be in the mix. Yeah, they must provide him with something he likes at certain points. I just don't know if Drew peaked too early as the coach. <laughs> Listen, if Drew Meekins is his coach at the Olympics, he has pulled up the greatest political feat of all time. Yeah. Because I believe there's gonna be a lot of stress in an Olympic season. We know Vincent is a skating mother. Right. There's a lot of posting on Instagram. The competitions go like north or south, right? Will he sustain that kind of positioning and energy? throughout the season. It'll be an intense marathon. <laughs> well, Drew maintain his good looks because if I'm, if I'm dealing with Mrs. O, Vincent who likes to post, Tom, Tammy, Mia who's having a lawsuit, Lauren Nickel who's got some strong opinions. Uh, you've got- That's plenty, that's plenty. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a lot to juggle. How many gray hairs? Let's count now and later. Can we scan it? Okay. Like, <laughs> I just, I, I, 
Imagine. Yeah. Imagining. Okay. Every dollar he's making. <laughs> he is earning it. All right. Yeah. And we also found out that my girl Michaela Skinner is not, she is going to be done after the Olympics and is not going back to the University of Utah, which I called. Jonathan, it's like the end of an era. Like she is just has so much energy to give. She willed herself to make that Olympic team. Oh, wait, now who were we just talking to? Was this something we talked about with Megan about when you almost announce a retirement before you get there? Yeah. What are we talking about? Like it can really actually make your mindset a little bit strange. Like when you go in and you're like, this is it. She let it to be known that she's gonna cash in. All right. Yeah. <laughs> before she even gets to it, she's already cashed in. Yeah. She's like the individual spot, maybe not slated to do, you know, make individual event finals. I think she's gonna throw in the kitchen sink for the Olympics. Okay. okay. She's okay. training some crazy skills that maybe she only hits <laughs> one out of five. Okay. She's got another month of training behind her and that willpower. And lack of PF Changs, the world is her oyster. <laughs> oh my God. She had PF Changs, but then this. This time they, she overflowed the toilet and then she was like, there was pee all over the floor. You know, she's, she's, she's the messy. Boundaries, boundaries, oh. Miss Skinner, please. Yeah. Listen, she is going to be the right wing influencer queen she wants to be. I'm watching. Okay, um, okay. That Fox News gymnastics correspondent. The Real Housewives are any different? Okay, uh, come yeah. on. All yeah, right. well, the Real Housewives don't have a job to do like she has to do coming up. Maybe she's more interesting. Maybe she has more substance behind it. Yeah. But I'm sad that we won't, I thought like, okay, if she does NCAA, we at least get more competing content and training content for another year, right? right. So, but if it doesn't materialize as quickly or as um, effectually financially for her, no wonder she's not doing it. I have never seen her be able, another gymnast be like, I stuck five Yurchenko double fulls without both judges giving me a 10. Maybe tonight we'll make it six. I mean, come on, Jonathan, like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is Oh, to have that sense of self. Yeah. Oh, I think it has paragirl energy. Michaela Skinner has paragirl energy. Okay. Yeah. And it worked. It got her on. I'm like Aliona, like she's with Benoit doing his camps. Is she gonna go back with Colorado? What is happening? TJ's Instagram deleted. Delilah made a new account private just for her. So like, what is happening in the world? All right, there's just some shady goings on. <laughs> So glad we downloaded those TJ music videos to have them. You know, like I just. <laughs> so then my YouTube forever thinks that I want more videos like that. <laughs> the one of the girl with the knife, we will have it forever. Yeah, don't okay. recommend like this, please. Yeah, I just had to watch that out of curiosity. What a mess. Yeah. What a mess. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait. Happy 4th of July. <laughs> Maybe you relive that Munich podium at 91 Worlds every day. <laughs> <laughs> Hold it to look sexy, everyone. Bye, guys.